Uh, I want to thank again uh, the three principal organizers, Kristen Aguilera, our deputy director, Chris Gulakos, uh, NYSA, and then our keynote speaker, who uh, is Larry Cunningham. Now, two of the three books that you're receiving today in the gift packs that you will pick up when you leave are authored by Larry Cunningham, and he is the Henry St. George Tucker III Research Professor at George Washington University, our keynote. Thanks so much, David. Uh, really, Chris Galukas deserves credit as the brainchild of this conference, and indeed the principal architect. Uh, he, along with uh, Kristen uh, Aguilera, really uh, had the idea. Uh, I just participated a little bit in reaching out to some participants, and I'm so grateful uh, to the two of them for organizing this. And I'm so grateful for all the panelists. As Carolyn, as Carol Luma said this morning, we, we did ask Warren if he'd like to come, and he very graciously declined, characteristically of Warren, on the grounds that he'd steal the stage and that he wanted the rest of us to be able to, to talk and indeed to, to say what, what, whatever was on our minds, that he didn't want to uh, skew the conversation. So. Uh, characteristically, graciously, he's letting us uh, have the conversation. Uh, but I want to thank all the panelists who have, have come and, and given such uh, uh, wise insights into Berkshire Hathaway and, and Warren Buffett. And I want to thank David Cowan for uh, this venue, which is just an immaculate uh, uh, environment to, to host such a gathering. And most of all, I want to thank all of you. This event sold out within... Uh, within a few days or, or a week, which never happens uh, at, uh, at this kind of event. So uh, thank you all very much for that, that enthusiasm and, and for participating uh, here today. And I also want to thank the people who have sponsored the conference, the Burgundy uh, Firm, uh, the Richmond Hill Firm, and Columbia University Press, uh, Miles Thompson, which is the publisher of one of the books you're going to get. And I'm very grateful uh, for their sponsorship of this program and of, and of my books. I met Warren and Charlie in 1996 when I hosted the conference that Bill Ackman referred to earlier today at Cardozo Law School, where the centerpiece of the symposium was what developed into this book, The Essays of Warren Buffett, Lessons for Corporate America. And it was just a wonderful gathering, and it was nice of Bill to bring it up so I could reminisce. And, uh, it also so happens that Carol Loomis attended that uh, event as well. And uh, notably, Charlie Munger hosted one of the panels at a moment's notice. Uh, another panel was hosted by the father of Roger Lowenstein, who, who chaired a panel here this morning, Lou Lowenstein, who was a very good friend of Warren's and a good friend of mine. Um, and Bill's comment about sitting right next to Susie Buffett reminded me of one of the episodes during one of the panels, someone, uh, Warren had just reached a retirement age at, at, at that time, 65, and, and someone asked the question, uh, well, what effect would there be on the stock price if Warren were to die tonight? Uh, <laughs> right there in front of Susie, we proceeded to discuss this issue at length, uh, and the consensus seemed to be that uh, it would there would be a negative effect uh, on, on Berkshire and, and on the stock price. And after debating this for quite a while, Charlie finally said, look, we ought to move on to another topic. Not all of us feel this is a congenial subject. And uh, Warren said, oh, that, that's okay, but I do want to make one point, which is that it won't be as negative for the holders as it will be for me. Uh, <laughs> a classic, uh, classic Warren. Um, now, at that, uh, that conference, uh, we, we came out with the first edition of the essays, which is a thematically arranged collection of his letters, and we've updated it every five years with new letters, and the fourth edition is just coming out in the next week, the 20th anniversary edition, and uh, it's debuting here. That's the, one of the books that's in your package on your way out, an advanced copy. It'll be publicly available on Amazon in, in a couple of weeks. Now, a few years after, uh, a few years ago, 
at uh, Berkshire's annual meeting, Charlie and I were chatting and reminiscing about that conference, and he said, you know, it's just so amazing how much different Berkshire Hathaway is today, 15 or so years later. Uh, back then, it looked like a mutual fund. 80% of its uh, assets were in common stocks, and just 20% were in wholly owned businesses. And by five years ago, the ratio was just about the other way around. And we marveled at how transformative that period had been. And then we, we also stressed, though, how the core values had stayed the same. And those values are, are animated in, in his letters. And I tried to, uh, I, I guess I tried to answer that question, the nagging question about what will happen to Berkshire after Warren is, leaves, leaves the scene. I tried to answer that in the book Berkshire Beyond Buffett, Lessons uh, uh, the Enduring Value of Values. And my argument is, is pretty simple. It's that Warren's single most impressive accomplishment in life, beyond the investment success, the managerial success, the philanthropic generosity, is creating an institution that is larger than himself. By endowing this business with these cultural attributes and populating it with the uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of, of people who, who share the values, he has uh, created the best succession plan possible, and he's done everything humanly possible, and his team have done everything humanly possible to assure the long-term longevity of this business. That's the argument I make uh, in that book. Now, as I've continued to reflect after those, uh, that's the other book that's in your, in your bag on the way out, but as I've continued to reflect on uh, Berkshire's 50th anniversary as, as well as the 20th anniversary of the essays, I've, I've discerned another unifying theme with, about Berkshire and Warren, which I think accounts for the bulk of its success as well as some of the blemishes, some of the weaknesses or drawbacks. My wife, Stephanie, uh, um, sitting right here and whom I must thank for everything that's good that's ever happened to me, uh, observes that a person's greatest strength is very often also their greatest weakness. And I think that insight applies to Berkshire Hathaway. I think the single source of its phenomenal strength, as well as the source of its blemishes, is its partnership attitude. Corporations are hierarchies in just about every sense, whether you're looking at management layers or priorities in a capital structure. But Berkshire Hathaway is flat across the management teams and in the sense that all of us who are shareholders are just co-owners with Warren Buffett. Principle number one in Berkshire Hathaway's owner's manual states, quote, while our form is corporate, our attitude is partnership. And, and that conviction of partnership dates to the earliest days. Warren, as you heard this morning, as you know, was running a partnership when it acquired Berkshire Hathaway. And despite its galactic scale today and all that it's done, it retains that partnership spirit. It's a radical and profound idea that I think explains almost all of the distinctive and huge advantages that Berkshire has, including these, the frugality and parsimony at headquarters, the loyalty of the management team and of the shareholders, and of an overall culture of trust and permanence. These are all partnership ideas. Now that same attitude, though, produces some costs including rare but real errors from a two-man capital allocation team, unusual but awkward executive departures, and journalistic attacks on the subsidiaries who lack an institutional public relations function. So as I look back over 50 years of Berkshire and ahead to the next generation, I believe that while these costs have been tolerable, with Warren and Charlie at the helm, successors will benefit from addressing them and containing them. It does not require a radical overhaul by any means, just a few adjustments.